Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Matson, and I wanted to walk you today through comping. What comping is, or compiling of a track, is basically taking multiple takes of the same performance and choosing the best between the two. I'm using Sonar X3, and Sonar has in it, with the X3 version, a feature called speed comping. During the recording process, if you have comping selected, what that does is it automatically starts inserting takes. This is the actual compiled track, and it consists of the takes below it that are chosen. There's two takes that were done for this track, and what I did essentially was take Billy Joel's She's Always a Woman and almost made it into almost a karaoke track by attenuating his vocals. This was to test out my condenser microphone. And right now, anything that's highlighted in a take lane below is going to be what appears in the compiled track. For Sonar, they inserted another, a couple features with X3 that were very nice. One is what is called speed comping. These take lanes, if I happen to choose or promote take two, the first phrase out of take two, what that does is it immediately inserts a split in every take underneath it, whether it be two takes, whether it be 20 takes. And once they're split, you always want to choose a zero crossing. This was also covered in the presentation material. Reason being is because the pops, clicks, etc., that would occur are going to be more noticeable if you do it on something like this where I have a high waveform. And I have a waveform that's not even close to the same amplitude. That's going to be a problem. Um, Sonar immediately will insert a crossfade. So if it's at a zero crossing, it doesn't need to be adjusted any. The crossfade that's automatically inserted is, is typically what's seen. With this, if I were to split it at a amplitude, inserting a bigger crossfade, which is simply seeing the cursor as it looks like now, which is the crossfade cursor and going up and down, would actually make it so that it will give it a better crossfade. And if it's at a non-zero crossing, that probably would be required. As you can see, this is starting to break up into a grid. And I can simply, using the comp cursor, click on something and immediately promote up into the compiled track. So if I want take one, this set from take one to go into the compiled track, if I want the rest of take two to go up into the compiled track, that's how I would select between those. I can also audition between those. There's a little bit more automated pieces that go in here. It's a little bit hard to do in the video because there's a video lag. I'm noticing this is my first video. And what happens is you can actually click on a piece, hit shift enter, and what it does is it immediately inserts loop markers and it, all, it starts to audition each take. When you get to the take that you like, if you hit enter, it'll immediately promote it. She can kill with a smile. I can show you this. She can kill with a smile. She can with and it starts to cycle through the takes. And those loop points, what that allows me to do is I can now navigate using the arrow keys. So the big points here are to prepare your compiled track. Get enough working space that you can see. Make sure that you've attenuated the other tracks or if you have a dim solo feature where you can actually uh, attenuate the tracks that are not being soloed. That helps you so you can hear what you're listening to. The other piece is to set up your working space so you can see it, easily navigate it, and understand the tools that you have. In the presentation, once these were clipped, basically these were dragged down into another track. And I could do that here if I wanted to. X3 just happens to give me the feature where it automatically promotes things and then I can promote back and forth as I choose. And I can always come back at a later point and do that. The attenuations, always try to get it to zero crossing if at all possible. Crossfade additionally if needed. And when you're done, the compile track will look like this. X3 also has the ability to flatten the compiled track and to remove all the pieces that I didn't use if I want to, so that when I'm done, the actual take is one clean track, and then I can work with it from that point going forward. This is, as I said, this is my first video, so I hope I covered what I said I was going to, and I hope that this was enjoyable for you. For compiling, this is a very, very important tool in the editing process, and especially to practice your takes before you do them, and when you're done, to understand how you can actually make them into one clean take. And again, this is Mike Madsen, and thank you for watching.